Kathleen here coming from my Facebook page. Um, welcome, welcome. Happy Sunday, unless it's Monday, wherever you are. Uh, it's storming here, so hopefully the connection stays okay. Um, I wanted to pop in here and talk about 12 steps that I've identified after going through two divorces with narcissists, being a healer, being an intuitive, having tools, what I've identified as steps to heal, steps to go through in order to get our life on track. This is really stepping into our power, loving ourselves, and moving forward. Um, I want to, uh, first of all, mention that tomorrow, in the Empowered Sisters Facebook group, and if you're not seeing this live in the group, you should be able to see uh, where the name of the group so you can join if you're not already in it. And we'll be going live for Monday's messages and meditation. So we do some cards, we get some inspirational messages going, positive thoughts on creating our life that's aligned and authentic to who we are and abundant. I like those three words, aligned, authentic, and abundant. Anyway, so I'll be sharing the messages for the week for that, as well as a little meditation to help you de-stress, get focused, and get on track for the week. So that's at 11 a.m. Pacific tomorrow which is 2 p.m. Eastern, or of course, you can catch the replay, but it's inside the Empowered Sisters Facebook group. So, onward and upward. So I hope you can join me for that tomorrow, and do uh, request to join the group if you're not already in it. So my one-to-one -one program when I work with clients is called Path to Empowerment. And I want to go over what I've identified as the steps we need to take, where we need to heal, where we need to put our focus in a deep way in order to really love ourselves and our lives after a relationship with a narcissist, which we know for those of us who've been through it, have we know how insidious, how horrible it is, so, yes, yeah, so we need to cover the bases because if we don't, if we miss something, then we're not fully on track to, like I say, love ourselves and our life, really stepping into our power and moving forward. So it goes without saying, I want to talk about the first step, which is healing the trauma bond. Now, the trauma bond that's created you know, from the back and forth with the narcissist. You know, there's love bombing and there's gaslighting. I I often compare it to being on a roller coaster inside of a blender because we never know when someone's going to press that button and everything's going to go haywire and our life is going to go up and down like a roller coaster. Um, and it creates this trauma bond in our mind and our emotions and it makes it hard to let go, even though um, to an outside person, you know, it's obvious that this is not healthy. And on some level, we probably know it's not healthy, but we can't seem to break away. And the only way to break away from the trauma bond is to really go deep. Um, so this is why I focus so much on guided meditation because it takes us to that deep subconscious level. That's the only place we can really heal deep enough to uh, move on and heal from the trauma bond. So that's step number one. Number two is creating healthy boundaries because we've got to lock out that narcissist. Going no contact is the best way, but not only that, create healthy boundaries in our entire life around those around us, um, whether it's coworkers, family members, whatever. The thing is, I don't know if you heard that lightning, but there's some thunder and lightning going on. Um, 
Okay, so we need to once again tap into the subconscious because that's our power. That's the powerhouse that's going to help us visualize our health, healthy boundaries, create those boundaries, especially because many of us are empaths. So we especially have weak boundaries. This means we're very empathetic to people. We're sympathetic to people. We're sensitive to others. Many of us are animal lovers. Many of us are rescuers. Many of us want to save the planet. And this is how one way we definitely attract, attract in a narcissist in the first place. So we can turn into people pleasers at our own detriment, right? We can really become exhausted. Whoa, there was a thunder from being the people pleasers that we are at times. So the healthy boundaries are imperative. So we break the bond, we put up the boundaries, and within that wall, we don't want to be, you know, have a wall to the point where we're totally cut off from the outside world, but we need to have that boundary. Number three is release the ruminating, and self-love is a key tool here. Uh, one of the biggest things I hear from women who've been through narcissistic relationships is they ruminate a lot. They, It's like dwelling over and over and over and over. And it's been this habit, you know, of we try to figure it out and we try to understand it and we feel all these negative emotions. We beat ourselves up. We get stuck in this vicious cycle where we just keep thinking about them. So we use tools and once again doing going deep to help release that ruminating. Now, number four is resolving anxiety, anger, and depression. We get anxious thinking about our future, thinking about what happened, um, and being ourselves up. We feel angry. We're mad at ourselves. Why didn't I see this? We're mad at the narcissist for messing up our life, whatever they've done. They may have drained us financially. They're good at those things. And the depression where we really go within and a lot of times it's pushing that anger within ourselves instead of letting it out so anxiety anger and depression again we need to go deep to resolve those things number five is quantum healing with the inner child so it's not just about healing with the narcissist we've got to go further back because why do we draw the narcissist in, in the first place? We've got wounds. We've got childhood wounds that go way back, probably decades, if you're like my age, <laughs> that are just not totally unhealed. The narcissist comes along, idealizes us, love bombs us. What does it do? It puts a band-aid over any of those unhealed wounds. So we got to do a thorough job in healing, not just the trauma bond, not just the depression, not just the current state of affairs, but rather go all the way back and heal that inner child. So that's number five. Number six, we've got to release the self-blame, the guilt, the regret, and the remorse. These are, again, insidious, and we beat ourselves up. We feel bad. Maybe we left somebody else for the narcissist because we thought we'd met our soulmate. Maybe we feel like we've inflicted some sort of pain on our children. You know, it's easy to regret, right, the being in the relationship in the first place. Like, why the heck did we go there anyway? Um, and remorse. It's all tied together. So again, we've got to go deep through the healing process to release that. And that's number six. Number seven is we become narcissist proof by building self-worth. When we really love ourselves, when we really value ourselves, we don't put up with this and we can smell the narcissist a mile away. We don't need someone to tell us how great we are because we already value ourselves. So this helps to make us narcissist proof because 
like I have done and other clients I've known and people I've talked to, it's easy to keep repeating them back, re repeatedly inviting them back into our life. We don't want to do that. So we want to become narcissist proof. Step eight is stepping into your true self. We've lost ourselves with the narcissist. We don't know who we are because it was all about them. And they gaslighted and they manipulated and they used gotcha games that put us down and all that other stuff. And so, whoa, there's another. <laughs> I think there's a message here in all of these um, thunder collapse here. So, who are you really? And I guarantee anyone who's been through this does not have a 100% clear picture on who they are. They've gotten lost along the way. Okay, step number nine. Your future vision. Do you know where you're going? That's what your future vision is about. Creating that vision. And by the way, that comes from a deep subconscious level as well, from the subconscious. We go deep to our intuition, which we have not trusted at all. This is part of trusting ourselves. I just saw some of this. <laughs> trusting ourselves through trusting our intuition and creating that vision, which comes from the intuition. We can't... Um, you know, we don't know where to go if we don't have a vision for what that looks like. So that's number nine. Number ten, we need to release any blocks to living authentically. Now, this means fears and beliefs. We're going to have fear. We're going to feel like, and this trust plays into it as well, right? But we're afraid that, you know, maybe we're going to repeat history or we're going to end up like some family member. So we have this vision for our future, but if we don't release fears and if we don't have strong beliefs in ourselves and where we're going, rather than limiting beliefs, limiting beliefs say, I don't think I can do that. I can't achieve that. I can't accomplish that. Those are limiting beliefs. We want to release those and we want to build strong beliefs in where we're going. Okay, that's number 10. Number 11 is to set your aligned goals. What are your goals for yourself? Where are you headed? Um, it doesn't have to be super long goals, but let's get those goals set so you have a path to walk down. We also, number 12, staying in balance. We need to keep our life in balance. We need to look at the whole picture of our life, not just our relationships, our romantic relationships, for example, are just one small aspect. We also have friends, our one love tank, shall we say, to fill, um, where we're living, you know, our career, our life purpose, our money situation, how do we feel spiritually? Are we aligned with that? Um, are we having fun? Are we getting recreation? So there's tools to use to really look at how much our life is either in balance or out of balance. Because as you go down the path of life, you want to have balance and be aware of where you're getting out of balance because that's where we really feel like <laughs> uh, we feel out of whack, right? When we're not in balance. So anyway, this has been an awesome <laughs> time with this crazy uh, thing that's going on here. So I want to share in the comments here, um, because these 12 values, these 12 characteristics of getting our life on track after a relationship with a narcissist, 
comes into play in my work one-to-one -one with clients in what I call path to empowerment. This is how we become empowered after a relationship with a narcissist. So is the path to empowerment, which includes these 12 steps, right for you? I would love to help you look at, let's look at what is your vision right now for your life and what's holding you back, where are you struggling, what needs healing. Let's connect, let's have a conversation and if it's a fit to work together, um, we'll look at that as well. This is a no pressure call to talk about where you are here, where you want to go, where you're stuck, and how these 12 keys to um, your path to empowerment align with you and how they can help you. So I'm going to put this in the comments to book your Time to Thrive call. Let's again have a conversation and look at where you are. I need to make sure I have the right link here. <laughs> so I want to make sure I have the right link. Um, yeah, because if we're missing any of these, as I was saying, if we're missing any of these, it can really not get us fully on track to feeling like ourselves, to feeling empowered, to, you know, having the clarity we need to get past all those roadblocks that are currently keeping us spinning our wheels in life. So I thought I had the link, but I'm just grabbing it over here. Aha. Uh -huh. So I've added in the comments where you can book your Time to Thrive call. And anyway, there's rain going crazy here. Thank you so much for joining me during this uh, interesting time. And think about those 12 points. Book your call. Let's have a conversation. I'd love to learn more about you where you're stuck, where you're struggling, and where you want to go. So, and also join me.